remarks that you're not a Republican or a Democrat. Mm -hmm. But we live and we work in a, in a city right now that is increasingly polarized and divided. And we are really drawn by two battlegrounds. You are either an R or you're a D. There's not much room in the middle, right, unless you are Bernie Sanders and Kristen Sinema, right? right? And the space is closing in on them even more every single day. Mm -hmm. How do we address these complicated issues that obviously didn't originate in the 80s but, but came to a pinnacle then and now are reemerging as some of the most complicated issues that policymakers are facing in doing it in a way where we can say we can solve this without being a Republican or a Democrat? That's a very good question. I'm going to have a very cynical answer. I don't give a shit about who pees where. I give a hell of a lot about how we're going to win this battle with China and their attempt to completely dominate one part of this planet at the expense of democratic nations. Agreed. All right, so I can say, I've just showed what my true colors are here. We argue about the wrong, stupid stuff at the expense of the really important. And our posture in this world, it doesn't take much to realize that all we do is go back 20 years and this world was a completely different place than it is now. We were at the top of the food chain. We, Americans, uh, whatever we wanted, we pretty much got around the world. And it's not that way anymore. And in that 20-year period, we've managed to run up, what is it, uh, 35 on its way to $50 trillion in national debt, which is, means that Either we're going to have to pay a lot more in taxes to pay for this, or we're going to have to reprioritize about how much of the social safety net gets covered. I'm going to come at this from a very kind of different angle. People like Reagan do not come along every cycle. He was a very unusual kind of president who had this foresight and these leadership skills who happened to be in the right place at the right time and galvanized a nation. He came, I remember that campaign very well in 1980, he put stuff out there that seemed revolutionary to certain people. And he scared even some moderates in the Republican Party because he was so brash about it. But in hindsight you look at that and you say that was leadership. So. Most of the clients I have come to me, they find me online or they see my YouTube channel and they call me and they say, I, I want to run for office. And I'll tell you, this is kind of where it starts. I can tell within an hour of time whether they have any chance of winning and whether they're ever going to be a leader in politics by the way they answer certain questions. And in a sense, this is the way it starts with all of us who deal with public figures. Those that I know are going to succeed in public life say, when I ask them the question, what would you like to accomplish, their answer surprises me because it isn't some piece of stuff they picked up out of the newspaper. It's not from some poll where they said, well, voters think inflation, immigration, and this are major issues. It's people who come and they have unique ideas about how we fix a certain problem or even what those problems are. So, you know, translate this into the heart of your question. How do we fix this polarization so that we can operate it in one country? And I'll say that part of it is understanding how we got here. We are going through a massive dem demographic change in the United States. This conflict was inevitable. If you have on one side, a population that is dead set about certain things and a younger generation that has completely different ideas. This is what will, in part, fix this, is a piece of this demographic is going to start dying in hordes over the next 10 years. And in fact, it may have already tipped the scales if you look at it, the way you see the emergence of voting trends in the United States. That's one of the things that will decrease the polarization. 
The other, God forbid, is a calamitous event that happens somewhere in the world that wakes everybody up, like 9-11, that shocked the country, which said, oh, holy shit, we've got to deal with this. We didn't see this coming. We have a calamity here. And that shocked the system for a period of time in Back in that day in New York City, I saw it didn't matter if they were Republican or Democrat, I saw flags in the window. It was a completely different time. Usually, it takes one of those two things. One is going to be gradual, and another is going to shock us into our senses. So Natalia, I want to, want to ask, based off of